So if you don't know who Dr. Disrespect is, you're probably not a teenage boy, but he is one of the biggest streamers. He was originally on Twitch and now he's on YouTube. And on YouTube, he has like nearly 5 million subscribers. When his stream ends at the end of the day, he'll have like over 600,000 viewers or more views on a video. He is a huge content creator. He does have a huge uh, audience of boys as far as I know. He is uh, sort of got a scandal after scandal under his belt. So he cheated on his wife which you know how much we love cheaters in this space. Zero, we love them zero, if you're new to the audience. Uh, <clears throat> kind of have a, a little bit of, a little bit of an announcement. Um, and I just want to be completely transparent with you guys. Uh, as you guys know, I have a, a beautiful family and a wife and kid and um i want to be transparent that i've been unfaithful and <laughs> and uh and i'm probably going to be Taking some time away, time off, to focus on um, <laughs> stupid fucking mistakes, man. <sighs> I'm gonna take time off to focus on my family, and and so I just wanted to let you guys know that. And I apologize to you guys and Slick Daddy, you guys are, I apologize to you guys, my sponsors and Twitch. And this is not, this is not who I am. It's, it's not what I represent. And <clears throat> that's it. He has a charisma to him. He definitely has a chemistry. He wouldn't be one of the biggest content creators if he didn't. And I think he's used that over the years to get away with a lot of things. I don't know how his wife is coping right now. I would be so icked out by my partner if they not only talked to a minor and admitted it, but didn't really take accountability for it. And we'll go through his, his statement about the incident. Over the years, he hasn't been able to speak about it, if you guys aren't familiar with his background, because of the settlement that took place originally. And so now, because somebody from Twitch ended up talking about it, he gets to talk about it, and he made his own statement about it. What's important here is that he does admit that he did have messages between him and a minor when he was in his mid thirties and they leaned on inappropriate. And because of that, I think that's really the takeaway here. But I do want to point out something that I think is interesting from all of this. I haven't heard the gender of the minor mentioned, nor have I heard an age. Did you see LSF of the Twitch worker saying there are many more? Uh, Dr. Scripson, most people have no idea how bad things are behind the scenes at Twitch. Uh, what is this here? How bad things were uh, behind the scenes at Twitch. I literally worked in an apartment that had access to most data information. I saw private whispers, etc. Uh, I saw things every single day that I wish I never had to see. Twitch up pedophiles run free every day. I signed NDA. I wouldn't get in trouble. Why did Twitch ban them three years after it happened? Probably because they didn't know about it until then. Like, Twitch isn't reading every single DM as it's being written. So I think what's more logical is that either the person who he was DMing reported him ahead of time or there was a Twitch employee that looked through his DMs. At this point, he's got nothing to lose and she should probably just uh, release the whispers. My, and this is all like super speculation and everything, you would logically assume that Dr. Disrespect would tell a story that paints him in the best light. So that means that if something was true and it would make him look better, it probably would have been included. And if something wasn't true and it would have made him look worse, it probably would be downplayed or not included. Based off of that logic, it is quite possible that Doc did know the age of the person because he did not state it. And it's also an assumption that the person was 17 because logically, right? 17 is the closest thing to 18. So if you could see 17, you would probably say that because that's the least worst thing. Doc admitted it. He didn't say, nobody said the age. I've watched a video after video. I've read article after article and I can't figure out, is it a girl or a boy or is it a they? Is it a 12 year old, 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old? I don't know how old this person is, but it was, it's known as the minor individual. That's how this person is being referenced. And so I don't know anything about the child, but I don't know if I'm thinking of a 17-year-old in my head or I'm imagining him talking to a 13-year-old. Like, 
This will also change the way that you perceive the situation. And keep in mind one more thing about Dr. Disrespect that I think our community here will find interesting. He tends to hang out with people and tends to be one of those allegedly associated with people who think like trans people are groomers. And he's always talking about people files and how he wants to protect children. So I don't know why a 35 year old man who claims he wants to protect children is messaging a minor inappropriately. So let's go ahead and go through it just so we're all on the same page. This is from his Twitter. This is Dr. Disrespect. It's called the Twitch ban. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the fucking bullshit. As you know, there's no filter with me. Already appealing to sort of the I'm, I'm raw, I'm real, I'm vulnerable while not being transparent whatsoever, but okay, fine. So he says, I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything that I can be upfront about. And I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community, as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio. A lot of the people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society and I, and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down. Our team is fully incredible. Our team is full of incredible, talented, and good people that have high career ambitions and families. And I, and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. So this is a company he he created as well. He's, and they're asking him to step down. Their tweet about it initially sounded more like a firing, which everyone has reported on. But he's making it sound like it was agreed upon. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch. For reasons outside my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. And this is true. This was one of the most infamous bans of Twitch. To be fair, I think even people who weren't fans of Dr. Disrespect were also curious because Twitch let go of a guy who was making them a lot of money. And now he's making YouTube a lot of money. He's probably making so much money, it's outrageous. He puts a lot of effort and production into his streams. He is one of the top streamers for a reason. Of course, none of that excuses his behavior, but it is interesting to see people rise to power, have so much opportunity, and not only cheat on his wife once, but cheat on her again with this minor. I'm assuming these are two different in incidents. I'm, I can't confirm that, but I'm assuming these are two different times. And the, like, could you imagine Mayor? I'm so sorry, I'm just gonna, could, we're, can you imagine being married to someone, having children with somebody? And they cheat on you with a minor? Like, already cheating is bad, but on top of it, a kid? It's like, who did I marry? It's literally that series on TikTok, like, who the F did I marry? I would be, I don't even know how his wife is coping. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine how distraught she feels. I would just, you know, it's one thing for a mayor to try to make it through a cheating scandal. Sometimes they can make it happen. But I couldn't even, oh, the way I would, oh, the ick would be so loud. I just, I, you know, I couldn't. <sighs> he goes on to say, were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. There it is. I don't know how old this minor is. I don't know the gender of this minor. It's just minor individual, individual minor. So he wants to make sure you guys know it's one minor. Okay. But still a minor in 2017, yes. He said, were there intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes leaned too much in a direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. I don't know what that means. You just admitted to, to messaging a minor, and now you're saying leaned in inappropriateness, but nothing more. Nothing more than what? Right? Right? What does that even mean? He says, nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. I met through a lengthy, I went through a lengthy arbitration, arbitration, sorry, regarding a civil dispute with Twitch. And that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear. It was not a criminal case against me and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. Okay. So again, this is important. No criminal charges were brought against him. Cool. Now he does go on to say, and I think this is important. He says, now from a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. This is kind of key here. We talk about morals a lot on this channel. We do not care about the law as much as morals, right? We care about the law to some extent. You guys know I'm concerned about the situation. I want to know the details of the why. I want to know 
why you would make this decision. Because look, I think we've all, you know, gone too fast in our cars or maybe we smoked weed in a state where it wasn't legal, okay? Like, we've all done something illegal. It's not the legality, it's the morality. Immoralities are individual values. So obviously, ethically, super wrong. All of this is super wrong ethically. We do not need grown men flirting with people who are minors, okay? And I think that's just ethically, yes. Morally, he says this is a moral thing he's taking responsibility for, which either implies this was his moral stance already and he betrayed his own morals or he never had the morals to begin with. This is why I say I like people who walk the walk. Because when people don't walk the walk, what good are they when temptation comes knocking? What good are they? How old is Dr. Disrespect? As of right now, I think he's 42, but at the time this happened, it was I think he was mid-30s. Okay? And Zoe says he edited the tweet now, taking out the admission of guilt. It, the, the one I'm reading is from is recently, unless I need to refresh the page. He's edited this tweet uh, multiple times, one without the word minor, one with the word minor, and then, well, he had the word minor, then he took it out, and then he put it back in, because people can see when you edit your tweets. So he says, now from a mor moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. P.S., guys, just like if you're a, a parent and you have a teacher in school, this is your biggest fear. Your biggest fear is your kids are going to be around adults who don't prioritize their protection. The biggest fear of anyone who has children is that the adults around them won't protect them. This was his responsibility to protect these children. And he didn't do that. He chose to make a totally different decision. And that's why he's dangerous. He's not dangerous because he's an adult or because he's a man or because he's a gamer or it's because when he had an opportunity to protect somebody more vulnerable, he chose not to. That's the part that makes him suspicious. And not, you know, not of necessarily being a predator, but worse, a person who's willing when the opportunity strikes to take advantage of it, which these are two different things. Just from a, a particular definitional point, a predator is different than somebody who like takes an opportunity but still, the outcome is horrible, right? He said, that's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should have never happened. I get it. I'm not perfect, and I'll fucking own my shit. This was stupid right here. This is him not taking accountability. Nothing here is taking accountability. I get it. I'm not perfect, and I'll fucking own my shit. This was stupid. What? This is him giving himself a way out. I get it. <laughs> my bad, guys. <laughs> my bad. That's what that sounds like. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect, bro. Nobody's perfect. And you know, there are so many imperfect people in the world who still manage not to send minors or message minors in any capacity, no matter how inappropriate. Like, I don't know if he literally sent them, but he was inappropriate. So that's what's, you know, your version of imperfect. You're right. But this is not holding himself accountable. He says, I'll own my shit. This was stupid. How is saying this is stupid? Owning your shit. He said, now, with all that said, don't fucking get it mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no fucking predator or a p Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me fucking knows where I stand on those things. With these types of people, fuck that. That's a different level of disgust that I fucking hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst of your exaggerations. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Okay. He's probably not a literally by definition PD. And he's probably not definitionally a predator, but he is definitely, definitionally, I think, too much of a risk. He is high risk. He is probably not safe around your whatever gender he's attracted to children and or vulnerable adults. Because, you know, I don't again, I don't know the age of the minor, but whatever he is, it's a person who can't say no to temptation. He's already cheated on his wife. He's engaging in bad behavior. He's not, he doesn't have the discipline. I understand why he doesn't want to be associated with that kind of degeneracy. But this is also a moral question I want to ask you guys. Is a serial cheater, somebody who serially cheats on their partner or somebody who like spreads STIs or somebody who gaslights their partners, is that as bad as a pedophile or is that something that's different? I would say it's different because pedophile is a pre child. That's really, really gross. It still is really, really bad. And even though you're not a pedophile, it doesn't mean you get to have like a sort of leniency because you only serial cheated or you only spread STIs. 
spreading herpes or serial cheating on your spouses is its own version of very bad in its own category. There's this bullshit on the internet that exists and in people's personal lives where you're like, oh, well, they just cheated on adults. Oh, they just cheated on adults. They just gaslit their partners. They just blah, 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 blah. Guys, it's really fucking bad. It's really fucking bad. Don't do that. Yes, it's different if you're literally going to compare it, but it's not even in the same category. These are violations of consent, but totally different, but this is totally bad. And so again, this leniency we even have towards adults who serial, we will call serial cheaters like very good people. We'll be like, oh yeah, this is a good person. A good person does not serial cheat on their partners. That's not what a good person is, according to values and morals of my, my standard, okay? So maybe your standard's like, yeah, that's a pretty good person. No, it's not, okay? That's a person who's doing something very bad right now. And I'm not saying they're always gonna be bad and I'm not saying they're bad for the rest of their life, right? I believe in redemption, but not people who make excuses for their bad behavior, who encourage the behavior in others or encourage an audience to react like it's not a big deal because this is encouraging an audience to act like it's not a big deal. He's like, I'm not really that bad, guys. I'm just kind of bad. He goes on to say, but I think I've said what I needed to say regarding the ban itself. That's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020. To my team, community, industry, friends that have supported me, I apologize. I wish I could have said all this sooner. You guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout all these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have the fucking best community and circle. If any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know you always have been greatly appreciated. But trust me when I say this to all my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real life experience, I don't give a fuck about you. Good news, I'm neither a hater nor a fan. And I do have a life outside of social media. You're just like untrustworthy, dude. You are a red flag, bro. You... You just can't be around people. Honestly, your wife should divorce you and take those kids. And you should guys should co-parent in the best way possible. But like, this is bullshit. This is just like bad. This is something psychologically bad. I'm telling you something. This type of behavior from this type of man is just so specific. It's a specific kind of person that's willing to do this shit. And I'm telling you, they need major therapy. He says, finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of shit, that's fine. I don't think his consciousness is a piece of shit, but I don't know him like that. I could never know that. But I would say his actions are shit. But I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all these years ago. Ooh, see, it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. Cheating on your wife is not a mistake. Cheating on your wife with a minor is not a mistake. You cannot say it's a mistake and say you're holding yourself accountable. How are you holding yourself accountable, okay, if you say it's a mistake? Again, what you say is, because there are people who make mistakes, and there are people who do not make mistakes. Both can be redeemed, but this one is not a mistake. Stupid fucking mistakes, man. This is not a mistake. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family, as mentioned on stream. I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, fucking right. Okay, so he posted that. 100,000 likes, 35,000 retweets, 32,000 comments. This is it. Um, let me refresh it because as far as I know, this is the updated version. Were there Twitch men? Yeah, so this was this is the updated version with the word minor in it because originally he had the word minor, then he took it out, then he put it back in. So this is the statement. Shout out to Kai Sinat. I saw him unfollow Dr. Disrespect. And he even said, man, I got to follow some other people here. I got to like, these people are crazy. Take that vacation. So shout out to everybody that understands like this is fucked up. Again, people who make mistakes are like people who accidentally misgender you because they're not used to pronoun switches or people that forget you're Muslim and accidentally serve you pork. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot. Or people that, you know, forget you're vegan or something and the forget it's like a mistake. Okay. A deliberate decision is when you serve people who are vegan meat or you serve a Muslim pork when you know for a fact they're vegan and, and, and Muslim. That's not a mistake. That's on purpose. Okay. You do not have full-blown conversations, cheat, do all of these things, and then claim it's a mistake. Again, he might not have the in, he might not have had the intention to harm a child, but he definitely had the intention of engaging with one. And more than that, he had the intention of engaging with somebody in an inappropriate manner who wasn't his wife. It's one thing to do something on accident. We all do it. 
And it's one thing to, on purpose, do something. Dr. Disrespect isn't this way because he's famous or a streamer. He's this way because this is a part of his character. And there are people in your life with the same character. I've met people over the years, same MO, men in their 30s, married with kids who cheat on their spouses with emotional text messages to minors or emotional interaction with minors. And you look at them and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And there is something wrong with them. That's not an excuse. You having something wrong with you is not an excuse for bad behavior, but we can have compassion to get them help if they take accountability. The dilemma is they don't. They double down and blame the minor for seducing them, or they double down and they blame their wife for being naggy, or they double down and say, oh, I was tempted, or they double down and say, oh, I guess I was famous and it was too tempting. Look, Cody Cointana was disgusting. And Tana even talks about it in a very nuanced way where she kept thinking, if this was my sister, I'd be pissed. And not that it impacted her very heavily. It's the idea that I wouldn't want it to happen again. There's a lot of things I look back on that I think would maybe traumatize. I love how serious we just got. Yeah, I know. I, know. I want to finish the smallest man in the world, but we'll go back. I, don't, I got it in my brain. Okay. <laughs> um, that like would maybe traumatize the average person more, but you've yeah. been through things that are so much more detrimental that you can kind of look back at these things and they aren't, they don't really feel traumatizing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was kind of the situation I was in and like my perspective on it. But then I was like, but at the same time, like if I had a 17 year old daughter mm. or a little sister or something, like I would kill. Yeah. You know, so then it's like. Same. Yeah. It, it's hard in that regard. And that's why we have to pay attention to, even if it didn't impact us, we don't want it to happen to people who are minors again. And again, we need to put a line in the sand about what kind of society do we want to live in and what kind of life do we want to lead? I want to protect vulnerable people. Even if you're a vulnerable adult, there's a level of consideration you make towards a person, whether they're of legal age or not, based off those things. And yes, there is tons of nuance here. And yes, consent is a very difficult subject. And yes, none of this is black and white. But at the end of the day, a 35-year-old married man with children should not be having any inappropriate levels of communication with anybody but his wife. Well, I guess he wouldn't have inappropriate like communication with her. But you know what I mean? Like, he, it doesn't matter. He shouldn't be engaging in it. And look, I'm so upset at Cody Ko for what he did to Tana. And more than that, I am upset that like he stood by a friend who had an allegation around him. And then you start to look at Cody like, why do you have these people in your life and why are you not talking about it? Now for the brand, he shouldn't talk about it. Dr. Disrespect was his fans were like, you shouldn't have talked about this, but he wants to be real and talk about it. But he's not doing it because he's had a change of heart. He's doing it because it like goes with the MO and he wanted to get on top of the story, I think, before other people had a chance to talk more about it. At the end of the day, I don't know why you all keep messing with people so young, but for whatever the reason is, stop. And I don't know why you keep cheating on your partners, but for whatever reason it is, stop and go get help because you do need help. If you cannot control yourself, if you do not have discipline, there are people who can help you with that. There's therapists, there's coaches, there's religious figures. There are ways to stop you and for you to learn how to have a better relationship with your own values or your own goals. And I think that's what's so frustrating. I don't need the law to come in and hold him accountable. He's right. This is about morals. And this is morally wrong. This is morally wrong. And I agree with that. I agree it is. Now, morals are subjective. There's no such thing as objective morality. I don't care what some people say. There's no evidence for that. But there is an evidence that we can move towards a version of healthy versus unhealthy. And I'm not here to support the mob, okay? I'm not here to say people aren't redeemable, but I am saying that I cannot allow this man redemption when he's not seeking it. Him calling it a mistake means he doesn't really think what he did was so wrong. He thinks he was a victim. You're not a victim, Dr. Disrespect. You victimized, and that's really bad. And that's the problem with a lot of these men I can think of in this category. Yes, they were very impacted. The men I can think of who act this way are severely traumatized, not an excuse for bad behavior. It is an explanation, and we can take it in mind when we're raising our boys and girls, and are they thems, to help them be better people as they come into the world. This is a lesson in parenting as much as anything else. And I think this is like very important. Pris says, how would you uh, differentiate a mistake compared to an accident? I mean, I'm just kind of, they're kind of the same to me. 
oh my God, I accidentally did that. Or, oh my gosh, I was a mistake. A mistake, I would say an accident is like completely without thought. And a mistake is more like, I thought I was doing the right thing, but it was wrong. I think that's how I would say the difference, but I could, they could be overlap depending. You know what I mean? <sighs> Doctor says, I'm appalled at how Twitch was able to cover this up, prioritizing its own platform over the protection of its primary demographic. And it'll get away with it too. You know, I'm not sure of what their responsibility was because even if you warn people, people don't care. I think that's the thing that's really difficult for people to understand, but also from my understanding, and I could be very wrong on this, the reason Twitch and Dr. Disrespect had a back and forth was because apparently the way that they found the DMs was allegedly illegal. I don't know how true that is, and I don't wanna get into it because that's not what I'm here to talk about, but allegedly, my understanding is that Twitch saw the DMs when they shouldn't have had access to the DMs and somebody basically blew the whistle. I don't know if that's true. That's just what the internet's been saying. But at the end of the day, if you wanna break generational curses, you have to break it. Now, to be fair, the reason on my channel, my saying is humans are gonna human is because I do think we're biological creatures on a planet. I do believe in evolution personally. I do think we are just a part of like the organism of the earth. I don't think morals are, are objective. I think they're subjective and I think they're taught. And I also think there's a level of your biology and brain chemistry at play here, right? There's a level of um, genetics at play here. There's just a, a level that we can't control at play for our actions. Though I believe in evoking free will, I think it takes an insane amount of introspection. And I think as introspective as people are, I think sometimes your brain, you know, it really has a mind of its own, as they say. And I really think it feels scary to be trapped in a body that doesn't have a uh, avenue for help. I don't think Dr. Disrespect is a person who's suffering that greatly. I think he's more or less definitely raised probably in a really misogynistic bubble. And he probably feels entitled to this activity. But I would say that if you find yourself in turmoil, there are people who will help you. And you have to go to the right people, but specifically people who won't just encourage you or pretend it didn't happen because this isn't a mistake. And I think that's the problem. Now, of course, some people were saying, well, he didn't specifically say that he didn't know or did know it was a minor, but he didn't say in his official statement that he he didn't know they were a minor, which I think for a lot of us would have cleared up a lot of the issue, right? It's the idea that you did know, or what's worse, you find out they're a minor, you had no idea, and you still continue the relationship. That's crazy, right? That's what insanity is, right? In my mind, in terms of ethic or morals, in terms of morals, I don't like any of this. But I, I think that these are the conversations we need to have and they're hard to have. It's hard to acknowledge that a lot of people in our life, a lot of people in our families, they are hiding things and they all have problems. And it's really hard to get everybody to work on those problems. Look at the internet, look at streamers. You know, I think ABBA made a really great video about this too. And he said it the same, like we, this is not okay. And there is a normalization in some communities, especially amongst famous people or celebrities that being fucked up is just a part of the norm. And I think regular people hide it better, but I do think we are not prepared for how many secrets the people around us are keeping. And I think it's really difficult to acknowledge that. It's probably not a lot, like maybe it's one in 10 people we know have like an issue they have to deal with that is kind of like scary to realize they're suffering from it, right? But I do believe if you're suffering, you can get help. Beza says, I'm late, but bro, Brett Cooper had a, such a bad take on this. It's the first bit of hers I've watched in ages. And I was like, you still defending shitty people, Brett? I literally, after she defended Andrew Huberman, I was like, I'm out, girl. I didn't even really watch her Dr. Disrespect video. I saw it and I clicked on it. And I was like, "Never mind, I'm not watching this. It's gonna piss me off. I think Brett is just getting paid a ton of money to follow a script. That's what it is. Like, I get it because sometimes people accuse me of doing that too, but I'm really trying to find the nuance. That's my job. It's not your job, so you don't have to do it, bitch, but it's my job is to figure out the nuance. But to be honest with you, I think Dr. Disrespect is just a very disrespectful human. I think he's incredibly inappropriate and I think he did this on purpose and he did not take like accountability whatsoever. I do not accept this level of accountability. It is zero this is bullshit accountability. I do not accept it. Rejected. Not that it matters, but rejected. And I think that that's the problem I'm going to end up, you know, this is the problem in all of our lives. Listen, my husband and I joke about this all the time that maybe we should just be island people that stay away from everybody because everybody are, they're just, their morals are so different. And look, I love a diverse world. And that's really what diversity is about. It is diversity of thought and morals, which is scary because you would think diversity would just be like little things, but no. Diversity is big things. That's why the world goes to war, right? 
And at the same time, I do think we can find some compromise within society. I do think we can find some compromise within our life, within our family and friends and our dynamics. You know what my mom said to me today? It was so sweet. My parents had a big stage of fat shaming in our family. And it was a lot. We're Middle Eastern. My parents are immigrants. It's like a big deal. But you know what my mom said to me today? It was the sweetest thing ever. I sent her a picture of myself from when I was fatter because I went through a fat stage in my life, don't we all? And I sent it to her. And she goes, oh, you look very beautiful, Betty. Like Marilyn Monroe. She goes, you look beautiful now. You look beautiful any way you are. Do you know that I was when I was in that fat stage, they made fun of me so much for being overweight. And it really hurt my feelings. And I told them that. I said, you are making me fatter because I eat when my feelings are hurt. I love food and you are hurting my feelings and I'm going to eat more. So stop hurting my feelings. And then I went to therapy and I got way better and I lost all the weight. Now I'm working out and blah, 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 blah. But for my mom to say 10 years later, you look beautiful either way is showing change. It's a change in people I believe in. My parents have done it. I've seen my family and friends do it over the years. I have seen people make a real attempt to change. It takes a long time and it is very difficult, but it is possible. And so I try very hard to encourage that change in people, not from a moral grandstanding position, but because I know it will set us free. It will free us from stress. It will free us from hating each other. I only have a short time on this earth and I'd really like to spend it getting along with my parents and my family. And in order for us to get along, we have to acknowledge that like a lot of us are traumatized and make very traumatized decisions. And that's the problem, right? Teresa says, how long have you been in therapy? I'm not in therapy now. I used to be in therapy. I haven't gone to therapy in many years now. But I do recommend therapy the way I recommend the gym. Go when you feel like you need to, you know? This was many years ago. Like my parents were fat shaming like many years ago. You know what I mean? It's been a very long time. And so to see them change now and to realize like, you know, we're getting older. We need to be kinder. We need to be more connected. But hey, people are not without issues. Trust me. I've got enough men in my life. And look, it is the men who are suffering. And look, they got to figure their shit out, okay? But mostly it's men who are suffering around me. And it's because they won't go to fucking therapy and they won't get better. And because it's hard. They are really good at doing a lot of hard things. But being introspective is very difficult for them. And I don't blame them. It's hard for everybody. But the men in my life are suffering in ways that, thank God, aren't as bad as this. Though I know a few people. But they're suffering enough. And they're literally like, you don't know how you let yourself go. Like you, you get kind of get like, let your body go. and You don't take care of it. I feel like they're letting their spirits go. I feel like they're letting their spirits go. And I think that's the problem. Tosi says, I hate therapy, especially with the type of people they're hiring now. Girl, you're in a bubble. If you don't trust therapists, you you're in a bubble. There are millions of therapists in the world. You just got to find the right one in the same way. You have to find the right priest in the same way you have to find the right fitness instructor. Therapy is a tool. There are so many ways to do therapy. If therapy doesn't work for you, find a different tool, but it's not who they're hiring now, right? I understand that sentiment, but you're saying you as a singular person know all of the people in therapy. That's what that statement is implying, right? Like, oh, every Catholic priest touches a kid. No, they don't. Every Muslim is a suicide bomber. No, they don't. So if you have the idea that this thing, all the people right now, like that's not what's happening. All of Gen Z is lazy. All millennials are this. All boomers are this. None of that is happening. But what is happening is people are suffering and they're suffering because they lack introspection and therefore extrospection. They don't know how to have a, they don't know how to have a relationship with themselves or with the world. Pris says, and therapy requires intention. You cannot go to therapy and not want it. Otherwise, it won't work. Exactly. Yeah. Tosi says, I love being in a bubble. Hey, we all live in a bubble, girl. But you do pick your bubble. So if you want to pick the bubble where all the therapists suck, that is a choice you're making. And that's why the world suffers. Because we pick decisions to suffer unwisely. Suffer wisely. It will change your life fundamentally. It will change your life. 
But you also have to find the right therapist. It's not about how long you've been in therapy or which therapist or how much you paid for therapy. It's about the right tool the therapist can give you to make you do the work because your therapist can't do the work for you. You have to do the work. You can go to 10 years of therapy and never get better. The same way you can go to your doctor for 10 years in a row and they tell you, hey, exercise and eat better and you never do. A doctor telling you what to do isn't what gets you better. You doing the work is what gets you better. Dr. Disrespect says he's holding himself accountable. Where is it? How do you hold yourself accountable? So what were, what would be some ways that we would see Dr. Disrespect hold himself accountable? Well, he could apologize to his victim. That might help. Notice how he didn't care about the minor involved. Notice that nobody said, hey, I'm sorry if how I've impacted you or how I might have hurt you or am I, how I might have been inappropriate with you. Okay, cool. What could have what could he have done to really hold himself accountable? What is his wife thinking? I still can't go to, every time I think about the wife, I can't get over it. Do you think she's going to stay married to him? I could never. Fishy says I was going to ask what accountability looks like here. I think it would be acknowledging the victim, acknowledging his wife, like truly apologizing, understanding the shame of the action, not calling it a mistake, and saying that I engaged in an activity that at the time I thought was reasonable, when I knew that it wasn't, or I learned or decided it wasn't. See, I don't know if he had the morals. I don't know if he believed it was wrong when he was doing it, or if he he believed it was wrong after he did it. Because a lot of people don't think it's wrong. That's why they do it. Or some people know it's wrong according to their own values, but do it anyways. So I'm not sure what he was thinking, but he would have to say something like, you know, I, I didn't think it was wrong when I was doing it, even though I knew it was wrong to cheat on my wife. But now in hindsight, definitely wrong. And I'm sorry I did it because I'm sorry I betrayed a value that was important to me. Something like that. Discord said the statement sounded more like, sorry, I got caught. That's what it sounded like to me. Science says this is a great discussion. I'm listening to this in the background as I clean up the around the house. Let's go. I love a cleaning stream. Danielle says, is Dr. Disrespect a sociopath? Maybe he doesn't care. Well, sociopaths have feelings and thoughts. They do care. <laughs> Antisocial personality disorder, they do care. They have empathy. <laughs> a part of empathy is learned. Okay. Antisocial personality disorder doesn't make you a bad person. If you mean, does he is he a psychopath? I don't think so. I think a lot of men think it's a it's within their right to cheat on their wives and be involved in kids. Didn't you hear about the minister? The like minister who just came forward and said he he did engage with a minor who was like 13 or 12 years old at his church and he talked to Jesus and Jesus forgave him. So it's good now. I just think they think it's okay. I think a lot of cultures think it's okay. I think cultures raise you to think it's okay. I think the fact that thousands of children are married in the United States tells me plenty of people think it's okay. And at this at this point in history, as an animal, obviously we've been procreating and bonding this way forever. And I'm saying we should stop. When I say society needs upgrade, if you watched my last video about being a broke boy, we need to elevate society to our next juncture of evolution. And so in order for that to happen, we need to, well, kind of collectively do it, but more or less start with ourselves. When we're having conversations about what our goal is, we have to be open to the fact that first, we don't agree on what we're all doing here. So I think we're evolved animals on a planet, which means like objective, objective morality wouldn't make any sense. I don't see any evidence for it, but I do think there's a way to be healthy. I think psychological healthiness is like a discovery and a tool. You know how we discover electricity or like we invented things? Okay, well, we invented the construct around mental health and we realized, oh my God, we could improve our brains and our consciousness by understanding ourselves. Philosophy and therapy. Maiden says men who get excited from the attention of children are just so clearly traumatized, insecure, and broken. It's sad and frankly, incredibly embarrassing for them to be outed as it should be. I mean... Maiden says there's not enough embarrassment from him for me. No, literally, he should be so mortified. It's the justification. It's the, I was insane. You just don't understand. It's the, it was a mistake. It's like, why aren't you more embarrassed about what just happened? You have a child. He has children. That's what I say. These fathers are not fathers. How engaged could you possibly be in your child's life if you are treating someone else's child this way? If you were treating someone else's child this way, how do you think, like, how does this, like, work out? I saw Cinnamon Toast Ken react to this, one of my favorite dads on YouTube, and he was pissed. As a dad and as a person, he was pissed. And it sucks when you have kids and you see them going into the world. The world's already the way it is. You have a kid. This is why this, like, you have a kid, bro. Stuck in my head in real life, 
fall in bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da